Welcome to the second part of our finale, our grand colony exodus to the stars. So the Ohm and, to be honest, mainly Arcadius' legacy can live on in the form of a dozen colony ships going to different worlds and maybe even different series in the future. And to be honest, it's not a moment too soon because the game has decided it's going to do some very illegal things such as Dividing by zero, which famously does not work very well. Now, as a result of the game trying to break the laws of physics, it will occasionally pause itself. Um, by occasionally, as in, like, every five seconds, it will automatically pause. And it's uh, a very horrible experience to play, and it's probably going to be a very horrible experience to watch. So... <laughs> so I'm going to do some incredibly good editing this episode. So that you will never notice... Oh my god. You will never notice it happening. By which I mean we're probably just going to skip over all the spaceship building. Well now that I've queued up advanced components to be patterned too, things are going absolutely fine. Just got a few more ship reactors to build and a whole bunch of crypto sleep caskets. And then we've got to resurrect 50 people. But other than that, things are, things are going smooth. We do have three infested ship parts to deal with. And seven chunks as well at some point. Let's hope nothing knocks them, otherwise we're gonna get an insect apocalypse on our front door. So to help the game not horribly self-destruct before we're even able to get to our kind of grand finale here, I've removed the EMC unit, the EMC duplicator, all of those insane amount of stacks I just had home sit there, sorry, Arcadia sit there and destroy them all. So that is probably our colony wealth gone down decently. It's not gonna be that good because we still have 25,000 Eternium, right? But I've, I've decided to leave a few of these behind because we do still need the occasional random resource that's a bit of a pain in the ass to get, like glass, for the crypto sleep caskets for the colony ships. And what I thought is, if we need any more EMC to power these, all we have to do is, is output Eternium to here, have these directly converted to EMC, and then have these guys draw from that again, right? I did, however, accidentally pattern 100,000 components, so we are going to have to <laughs> we are gonna have to destroy that as well. Oh no, wait! It turns out I actually patterned uh, 241 thousand components. Well, look, we need some extra for the spaceship, but things got a little out of hand there. Oh, hey, look at that! With the exception of the mech cluster that one of our characters just wandered into and annihilated while I was trying to get the game working, this is the first proper raid we've had during the ship countdown. We got advanced mechanoids from. Advanced mechanoids are very, very efficient. That's why they're advanced, you see. And they're right in the frigging kitchen. There's only five of them. Uh, again, given the whole colony wealth and the 500% merciless void. Oh, shit. What is even happening anymore? <laughs> I'm not even going to try and figure out what's going on there. Given that there's only five of them on the hardest storyteller I've seen on the hardest difficulty possible, I was kind of expecting more than that. Oh, it's just a bunch of, bunch of these guys. Well, I'm sure Arcadius can handle that pretty quickly. Six more days before the first ship containing Captain Cuba, Vivin, Gravy Plasma, and his wife, Penny, Vivin, Gravy Plasma, can be sent to the stars to continue on their legacy. And, of course, the legacy of Omen Arcadius. A lot of people were concerned that Captain Cuba, Vivin, Gravy Plasma, if you remember, was our kind of biological experiment to see if it was safe and a good idea to implant Arcadius with some bionics and... It ended pretty horribly. But when his head was reconstructed with the DNA met reconstructor, the butcher's nails weren't reconstructed with it. So the thing that drove him insane wasn't reconstructed, luckily enough. And now for the real question. If one spaceship loading up caused the game to try and divide by zero and bring it to a complete standstill, what the hell would firing up another 11 spaceships do to the game? Go on then. Why not? These are going to be the slowest 14 remote days I think I'm ever probably going to see in the game. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Just just put those there. We'll deal with them later. No! <laughs> I suppose it wouldn't be the final episode if someone didn't have a bloody heart attack. So, wait, wait, wait. Did I not give you the... Oh, my God. What happened to his eyes? Does Panacea not stop? It... What? Panacea lasts 248 hours. Prevents heart attack. The man's having a heart attack right now. Oh, maybe it's way worse than that. Maybe it stops him dying of a heart attack, but maybe he still has the heart attack. He's a doctor. He can tend to himself. You can do it, Toy Boy Roy. Treatment success. Uh, he only had a 4,985% chance. So you could say that that was pretty close. Well, we're a third of the way there with the other 11 colony ships. And besides the additional insects, 
nothing's happened. Now, our top priority is our current living colonists, the people who have helped pave the way for these colony ships to take up in the first place, right? So the next family I think I want to send up is a family that got tragically overshadowed by the resurrection and remastering of their great, 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 great grandfather. And that would be Brig Lebowski, his new wife, or fiance, Crow, Cuba, Vivian, Gravy, Plasma, and then his daughter. And you know what? Because we've got these six pods on this, why don't we also send smelly and her new husband as well magic baby that way we're sort of keeping the family together but we're also allowing for two different family trees to to branch off of that one and if you're thinking that doesn't give them much genetic diversity i think that ship is probably long sailed my friend oh there it is the first ship is ready that'll be the colony ship with captain cuba and his wife penny right and i'm certain that captain cuba is a character we will see at some point in the future a man who was resurrected six times seven times something like that and turned into a bioweapon that's a, that's a character that needs a redemption art right there goodbye captain cuba first of our many colonists sent out into space wow there we go and those are the end credits but obviously we still got we still got more to do first, actually, if, if that's all right. It is so bizarre to have a complete story for colonists and have them saved, free of the madness. We're going to have to immediately throw down another colonist ship, though, because unfortunately, the amount that we've got right now is definitely not going to be enough. Why did that not copy over the... Oh. Wait, what? Oh, weird. No, I can't place those down. What the hell? Are you only allowed to launch one ship? Because that's really... That's really going to make things very not cash money. All right, don't panic. Just the game being very weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love how fast our people could just casually throw together a colony ship. That's, uh, that's a pretty high tier play. Wow, it really is just like every single incident. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> that was one or two more ship chunks than, uh, than we're used to, sure. Ah. Oh. Okay. Maybe a quick uh, draft up and search and destroy for that one, huh? Conveniently... I started working on some new weapons for our people, too. I suppose we'll get those re-equipped after this, seeing as the game is uh, upping the ante a tad bit. Oh my god, they're smashing the shrines. Those have been there since the start. We can't let anything happen to them. Shrine of Arcadius is fine. The shrines of the random number god got battered, but it's otherwise fine. Someone requested this in response to yesterday's episode, and how could I not? The stable matter shiv. Well, somebody else also said that the shivs don't get a quality bonus like knives would counterpoint to that is it is a stable matter shiv uh it does 16,000 melee damage dps and 1,615 armor penetration i feel like at this point worrying about whether it's excellent or legendary quality is a bit irrelevant but also we could say fuck it and go back to what i think has been the most iconic weapon the entire series we could make some stable matter power fists Wow, they are staggeringly fast to build. Oh my god, it's a legendary immediately too. Arcadius, what the hell have you done? There it is. The title of it is Ciala Skunk. Oh no. <laughs> 500,000 hit points. 36,000 melee DPS. Holy shit. And it's also worth uh, 750,000, which is quite nice. An engraving on this weapon depicts Ciala Bonsabat inscribing her name on a ship computer core while smiling proudly. The ship computer core appears to tower above Ciala. This illustration refers to Ciala finishing construction on a ship computer core. Wow, how very meta. Defoliator ship. Wow, I feel like it really is upping the ante, huh? Hello there. These weapons will at least offer some entertainment because they don't just instantly kill whatever they come into contact with. So this way, we should see a good stable fisting to... Oh. <laughs> well, even with the armor penetration being quite low, I suppose it doesn't matter when you've got 36,000 DPS, huh? Another 6.6 .6 days before the mass exodus can begin. And as I said, our first priority is to what the colonists that we have right now Ohm, Struppers, Arcadia, Ciala. The, the important ones will stay behind, but we'll try and give these current descendants the greatest opportunity possible to get out there first and foremost. A lot of the people in the graveyard lived long and happy lives, only to die tragically from a heart attack, right? So it seems... I, I, I think it's only fair to give these guys the, the same chance. And then finally, we'll resurrect Lyra, and everyone in the comment section will stop complaining. 
I've decided I'm just going to collect these from now on. The real question is, can we beat the game before the map fills up with insect ships and we can't move anymore? So Major Bomber isn't married and her parents, Uwu and Toy Boy Roy, are both still alive. So I guess we'll send those guys all up in a single ship as well. That might seem a bit weird, but they're avians. They live a lot longer than humans. You're just sending, you know, a child up with their parents to space for the rest of time. Five, four, three, two, one. I was really hoping there's some, oh my God, some insects would, uh, would drop down to really mark that. So we've got two ships prepared with colonists. Ship one contains the current patriarch of the Dymos dynasty. Well, the final descendant of the Dymos dynasty, Brig, Lebowski, along with Smarty, Crow, Smelly, and Magic Baby. Then in our second ship, we have Major Bummer, Uwu, and Dr. Toy Boy Roy. Goodbye, my friends. Enjoy outer space. That's some more people saved. This feels good. It feels good to save and not just either abandon them or leave the story there. Goodbye. And then second spaceship. Boom. There we are. Wow. So we are down to 11 colonists. Now, I'm not really sure what group we want to send out next, if we even can from what we've got right now. We could send... Uh, oh, so you're on your own then. Oh, and Fiza is Bon Bon Sabat's mother, but Bon Bon Sabat is married to Siala, but is also engaged to corrupt the second Chicken E. Pank Dimos. So I guess the real question is, would Siala go with her husband, who is also getting remarried, or would she stay behind with the colony? And I think she would. I think Anfisa, Bonce, and Corrupt as another group is uh, is a sensible idea. Siala has been resurrected. She's already had so many families at this point. I think she'd understand that these colony ships are all about... They're all about the next generation, right? All about getting this legacy out there into the universe a little bit more. Goodbye. There they go. Anfisa, Bon Sabat, the Sabat Patriarch, and Corrupt as well. So in terms of our people left behind, we have Avion who has no living family members whatsoever. A pretty sad story, to be honest. Husband was Arcadius the second Chicken Pang Dimos. Both her parents are dead. Uh, four of her children went missing. You're kidding me. Cup the second Brig Lebowski. Oh, oh, missing just means that they have, they've left. Missing doesn't mean that they're here in the colony. Brig Lebowski, of course, has gone into into outer space. We could always send her up with Arcadius the second when when we eventually get around to resurrecting him. Yeah, same story with uh, Susumu as well. If we resurrect Susumu, we get Fendeldorp back as well. Arcadius the second is restored. Same with Fendeldorp. And then we're also restoring Hanky Pank, who was... Uh, I don't know why he was dug up because he's a really, really, really old one. I guess I was just going through the various different patriarchs at the time. We'll wait a while before we resurrect him, though. And there we are, a second chance for Fendeldorp and Arcadius. I, I guess we'll just load them straight onto the ship, right? Perfect. And then Avion and Susumu to join them. That's two more potential families blasting out there. Horribly inbred zombified families, but they're pretty well equipped too. Don't forget they've got incredible stats and traits they've been training up all this time in construction medical crafting shooting these guys are going to be absolutely fine they're probably some of the best equipped colonists we've ever had in remote to be honest and i guess we better just start digging everybody up at this point let's go for a mass grave opening and a mass resurrection oh it's worcester sauce hello worcester sauce welcome back and wang of course one of our more recent deaths oh lumpy lumpy was one of the characters that we didn't actually get to do anything with i think we need to build a ship of uh Almost kind of random characters that we... Whoops. Accidentally constructed you twice. Characters that never really were able to to do anything or get into any relationships or, or achieve anything before they were kind of horribly killed. Shotgun Diplomacy and Keg Denser and Coddles. Oh, Beckle Peckle. Hello, Beckle Peckle. We'll have to try and make sure that we are sending up, you know, kind of families together again, like I said. And Lyra. People are going to be so happy to finally get Lyra coming back. Wait, attempted to recruit Lumpy... Lumpy was a prisoner? You son of a bitch, how dare you. So Sister Lister was unmarried then, huh? So we'll load you onto the ship of kind of random odd people who again never never ended up having a full family. Hang on a second, I was about to say there's no way that Lyra has any living relatives. Father is Arcadius. And Arcadius is right there. Wow, I was just about to load her into the ship of random people, but you know what? 
You're welcome to stay. Oh, I completely forgot we had that as a faction uniform. It's the original Stasius. A lot of our steampunk characters here as well. What was that tribal character there? That's one of the earliest. Kronk? I'll be honest, Kronk, I don't even remember who you are. <laughs> oh my god, that's not a colonist at all. Who the hell put that in a grave? Kirkland in glasses. Alias. Oh, wow, there she is. She was our, what, second ever colonist or... or, or uh, hang, on, hang on, no, it was after Struppers and Arcadius, I think. Really don't remember. And the Arcadian tomb. We have Octavius, Crobe, Kippos, Janosch, Moira, and finally, Herky Jerky. I kind of feel sorry for all of the people who got resurrected first. <laughs> <laughs> we did have a few of the filled graves, but those were filled with the bodies of random raiders. They were all shattered sovereignty. What about here? Who have we got here? Big Pepper. Come back, little Big Pepper. Um, hello? What the hell? That happened so fast. It didn't even slow down. Well, I mean, obviously it wasn't a, an actual problem. It was so strange. You know how the game normally slows down whenever you get a raid? That time it was just... Nope, here you go. Void secret weapon, breaking game mechanics. Well, I suppose we better get to reconstructing some of these bodies then, eh? Gammon, Gammon? Who the fuck was Gammon, Gammon? <laughs> DQ! Hello, Dairy Queen Bordoon, welcome back. Wow, this really is a trip through the ages, huh? Last month of my life. Pank Gravy Plasma! Back before the names were so ridiculous. Oh, and Romulus! Oh, we can't send Romulus up. He was so important when he was... Well, I mean, alive. Oh, look, it's actually put him back to the order that he was in before. If there is ever a ship with Ohm, Struppers, Arcadia, Seattle, Romulus will go with them. He was he was key. And there is Moira and Fatigable, Kronk, and Original Stasius there. Collateral Cleavage, hello. A little bit surprised I remember half of these people. What an absolutely horrifying experience. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, just start loading them onto the ships, for God's sake. I do kind of like the idea of just having completely random people on the colony ships. People from across hundreds of years of development is way cooler. Also, there'd be a slightly little less inbred than, well, than our current colony ships have been. You know, a good few generations distant rather than being cousins and parents and grandparents. Bonobus just immediately got up and walked away. Where the hell are you going? Must have had some bionics. Ah, oh, mecha legs. There you are. Oh, no, I made a horrible mistake. I set it to two and one for each colonist, didn't I? And we have um quite a staggering amount of colonists right now. Well, look, you can never have too many fists. Okay, I think that's everybody reconstructed at least. Now we just need a few more resurrect mechs. Oh, I was about to pause the power fist, but apparently we've crafted one for everybody anyway. Why are you not panning those resurrect mechs? All right, um, got on it instead. What? Nope, machines broke. Uh... Why, though? Oh, that could be a problem. Weird. Okay, turns out the robots just can't do it for whatever reason. And with that, that is every single colonist. Not every single colonist we've ever had. Some were lost. Some were destroyed entirely. Bodies burnt away or whatever else. But that is, for the most part, every single colonist we have had for the past however many hundreds of years. All waiting to be blasted to a whole new planet. All we have to do is load them in and send them off. Oh, not now. Okay, this is probably be the final one before we have to... Oh, shit. Uh, Arcadius, come and tidy this up for me. Hello. Uh, please piss off. I can't believe it, but I think we had enough room for everybody. I couldn't see anyone else in any beds. There is Herky Jerky. I don't know why you were, in, you were imprisoned, but, I mean, we could always just... Stick you in a crypto sleep casket and make it whoever else's problem that you get sent up to space with. Wow, we really did fill all of those up. Holy crap, where are you? Oh, oh, that counts as a crypto casket. No, don't put people in there. So hang on, we're missing one, two, three. And shotgun diplomacy, four more pods. We've got three more to build over here. Oh, we need one more. I'll just put it there. I'll just put it there. That'll, that'll work fine, right? So we didn't have quite enough room for the little extras here as well. So we're going to throw in keg denter. Dumbo, we are going to throw an Alpha, the most, well, the youngest of all of our colonists. Shotgun Diplomacy, and then we will keep the, the the big five here as the, I guess, final colon ship to send out. Oh, 
And apparently Jester. Hey, Jester, get in the freaking ship. Turns out there was also Dawn as well, so she's going to have a nice fun time strapped to the front of the rocket because there isn't any other room. Goodbye then, my fr- Oh. Wait, we got a- What- What do you mean? Capone, not ready, ship reactor. It's still got three days to start up. Okay, well that one doesn't matter too much. Let's get all of these guys sent up then. So first colony ship is Doodlesack, Barnabas, Atreus, Surviving, Alias, and Hezron. Goodbye. Wow, two of the Patriarchs in a single rocket. Turns out you have to restart the game between launching each ship, and I'm straight up not having a good time right now. Get out. Get out of my base. Don't ever come back. I don't care who's on this ship. Piss off. Okay, who's actually on this ship? We've got Cuddles, Collateral, the original Stasius. Wow, we a little gravy plasma, Lyra, and Worcester Sauce. Gravy plasma matriarch. Wow. Kekvit, Bumfrey Hogger Plasma, Jones, Snowdog, Kippos, and Helviticus on ship number three. Or I suppose ship number four now, if you include the first ship. Sister Lester, Wang, Beckle, Peckle. Oh, well, Stacey's Patriot there. Mr. Cake, Moira, first generation Arcadian, and Dranmere on ship number whatever we're at now. Oh, Octavius. Well, the legendary crafter. I think he was the highest crafter out of everybody besides Ohm, right? Kronk, Pank, and Hanky Pank, Gammon, and Puke Soup, the guy who was crushed by three meteors in a row. Major Bummer. Oh, that's a recent one. DQ, Fatigable, Toilet Gravy, Cassandra, and Bap Snug. And finally, of all of the mountain colony ships, we have Yanosh, the Hobo, Taco Cat, Billy Bonds, Racy Susan, and Sugar. Leaving us with all of these guys. Now, I kind of been on, on a couple of those ships. It said that we had, a, oh my god, a baby that we resurrected. Damn it. Well, I guess we'll stitch another pod onto the outside of this one. This one's got a few days before it's fired up and ready to go. And finally, we have our final ship ready. Goodbye. Get out. This might be up there with craziest ship we've ever done in Ramon. We have sent Amaya, MJ, Arab, Sabat, Krobe, Big Pepper, Narfulf, Herky, Jerky, Keg, Denta, Dumbo, Alpha, or Alf, or whatever I called them. Shotgun Diplomacy, Dawn, and Jester in the final ship, which means every single character from our graveyard has been launched, leaving Ohm and Romulus, Struppers, Arcadius, and Ciala. And actually, like, a fairly good tick rate. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the only thing left then is to build a final ship for our final colonists. And to hopefully put to bed a comment I've had a thousand times since it first happened, you can't do anything with a quantum device. Yes, there was an event pop-up saying you should do something with it. I've looked at the code. There's nothing. There doesn't seem to be any other reference to the quantum device in any other part of the mod. You can't click on it. You can't interact with it. You can't do anything with it. As far as I know, it's just a placeholder for potential future expansion for the mod. So basically don't panic. You know, th there isn't some big special ending that we've missed or anything like that. But what we do have is our finale. Seven pods for our, of course, five colonists, Avalon the Holy Beaver, and Arco Joris. But in conclusion, we are ending it with that much wealth, 166 million wealth we have played for a total of six days, four hours, 49 minutes, and 11 seconds. Bear in mind, that is real lifetime. 1,016 Rimworld days, which in a regular Rimworld campaign would be just shy of 17 years, 16.93 years. But with our 18 times speed taken into account for colonists and aging and that type of thing, that's 300 and four years in total 161 major threats 92 enemy raids 843,000 damage taken on this map apparently and more importantly 73 colonists launched into space the legacy of ohm and i think arguably the legacy of arcadius lives on out there among the stars and as i said maybe even in future playthroughs and i think the final thing to do now is to send our final five up into space. Just gonna have to anesthetize this beaver. As a YouTuber though, putting beavers to sleep is my specialty. Now for Arcadius. Goodbye Arcadius. See you on the other side, my friend. And then last but not least, 
Ohm and Arco Joris. I don't know why Ohm is going elsewhere to get medicine and not using this medicine in here, but there we go. Wait! No, the ship is launching! This isn't right! Oh my god! They left Ohm behind! How can such a thing have happened? And there you have it. It was Arco Joris all along. I don't know what was Arco Joris all along, but I, I, I'm sure it was something deeply impactful. So the original ending I had planned for this series was very, very different. Originally, I was setting it up so it would be an Arcadius versus Ohm showdown. A lot of people predicted that. In fact, I saw hundreds of comments basically getting the exact ending right, and it was going to twist into, you know how the uh, the Arcadius dynasty were the master crafters, and they had the showdown with Ohm who went rogue because he took the research too far with the whole science never stops thing. It was all kind of falling into place, uh, and and the, the eventual twist was going to be the descendant of the of, of Arcadius was going to be Robo Daddy. There you go. Plot twist. It's all very meta. Uh, it ended up that Loads of people predicted that. I saw so many comments in Discord and YouTube comment section basically guessing that exact ending. I thought, look, I can't do it. Uh, it, it. It's too obvious. So who do we make the bad guy? Well, I can't really do that. To, I mean, Romulus might have been an interesting one, but I don't think many people might have even remembered who he was. Struppers and Sialla didn't really make any sense. And Arcadis was the original. Who else have we got? Well, it was the choice of a beaver or an Arco Bear. And, and the Arco Bear has been there for a very, very long time. He's 2060 years old, of course. So I thought it was the obvious choice, and it ties in quite nicely to the whole Arco aesthetic we had going on anyway. But that wasn't the original ending. Just thought it was, uh, thought it was a nice <laughs> twist. <laughs> and of course, a big thank you from, from me for the support over this entire series. It's been one of, if not the most popular remote series we've ever done. And I think people, I, I get the impression that people enjoyed it more than the kind of usual thing. And again... As much as I reiterate, I am just the person who collates all this stuff. The real hard work is, is from the actual modders themselves. So if you have enjoyed any aspects of this, make sure you're going to, you know, Steam Workshop pages, like your mods, favoriting, viewing their other links, whatever that happens to be. Those are the guys putting in the real hard work here. I'm just the one presenting it all in a, in a relatively silly way. And of course, in 1.3, this this idea, the, 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 the kind of inherent generation, faster time style system will almost certainly come back. With a, probably a little bit more balance, this was obviously a test, not something I've never done before, or something I don't know that anybody's ever done before, uh, with the much faster time frame on things. Definitely needs a little balancing. Had I realized the series would have gone on for as long as it did, I probably would have made them age slightly slower. I do think that the biggest weakness still, and something I'm going to focus on trying to solve, be that with mods or, or maybe doing something else entirely, I, th I still think the biggest issue is that individual characters, a lot of them just became sort of sidelined that we, we we had a lot of kind of important characters the five characters we've got remaining of course captain cuba and octavius and and all of those characters definitely played a, a bigger role but for the, the the majority of colonists definitely were sidelined because they didn't have enough time to develop with this system in place hopefully when we get mods like the one two three personalities even things like psychology vanilla traits expanding and allowing people to change over time we just need a mechanic to make them more recognizable, more characterized. And that's going to be something I really try and work on before we before we do this style of mod pack again. And of course, if you have any suggestions for that, Discord link is below. We have a fancy link now because we're a Discord partner or verified or whatever the hell the word for it is. Uh, so feel free to throw that in the Rimworld modding channel. And uh, that'll be something that 
I think when we get over it, we'll definitely take it to, again, a whole other level. I will make this save available for those of you who want it. If you are running uh, kind of this mod pack or as close as in using character editor, you might even be able to export them. One thing people always ask me is how can I get, you know, characters in my own game short of making them in character editor where you can save and export characters from character editor and import them into your own save. So say you want Arcadius, it will attempt to recreate them as close as possible. I'm not sure if you will get all of the many, many, many family members and whatever that Arcadius has. If you don't have the Bionics mods, I believe it'll spawn in with nothing, so just bear that in mind. Uh, but it will create him as close as possible with his skills, his traits, and everything else. All you have to do is just simply save him to a slot, loan into another save, re-import him. And that, the, the cool thing about that is it, it persists between mod packs as well. So if you start a whole new playthrough or a whole new mod pack, you can import him into there and it'll try and recreate him as close as possible. You don't need the same mods. It's all character editor specific which is uh which is quite a nice thing the other thing i've got to give a massive shout out to is the many many extremely talented artists who chose to spend their time creating art of this particular series i'll put up some on screen that i've gotten permission to use for the video incredibly talented and and i'm i'm honored that you would choose to create fan art of again my silly brimworld series exploring these very strange and bizarre characters so thank you and and big shout outs to all of these guys i'll put whatever links to uh to their socials that i can find and that they've provided in the description too so if you want to check out more of what they've done if you like a particular style maybe they've got some commissions open or something like that go and have a look and and go and thank them for you know being such massively supportive members of the community and the final thing to say of course is thank you all for watching i hope you have enjoyed this what was intended to be a very much a a, a cap on rimworld 1.2 and, and I think it I think it really did do that we've explored every mod of That, that I, I wanted to explore of RimWorld 1.2 of course you didn't get a chance to see everything There's still a lot of incredible mods from from that particular era of the game Pre-ideology that uh, that we didn't get a chance to look at you know Some even in this mod pack that, that kind of got overshadowed or we didn't even get to look at But I think as, a, as an exploration from that tribal era all the way through to what we've got now I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the, with the progress on this one. So thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I think for next series, just as a little circuit breaker, as a little palate cleanser for my own benefit, we'll be doing something a little more simple, but a little more recognizable. Let's say it's not just Arcadius getting remastered. And as always, I have to give a thank you to the patrons who give me the time to be able to Produce the content that I produce, collect the mod packs, do the second, third channel stuff, whatever that is, the time for the admin work, and the 8 to 12 hours a day I spend on each RimWorld video. And a big thank you for today goes to Pang Power, Average Nobody, Tenacious Bloom, Shotgun Diplomacy, Aromatic Fool, Bling Magica, Deadly, Black Belt, Sweet Sea, Vermin, Syrup 313, Spongy 1312, Germstone, Siala, Kyle, and Smack You, along with, of course, everybody on the executive producer patreon list the lists are updated this was just the final little bit to do for for july so i thought you know it's fairly fairly appropriate that we ended the final series with the final few patrons of that month so thank you guys all for your support it is again as appreciated as ever and hopefully if i can find enough time to get them all packed together do the intro whatever else we'll start some more remod starting tomorrow thank you as well to uh Sparky Fan 1, Struck Iron, Bo 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 Bo, Bo Bo Bo, Kato, Huderman, Justice for Ilya, I'm so sorry, Typhon 192, Freaking Satan, Fred, Trench Gun, Prince Jordan, Cat Lord, Hawkin, Kickstart, William, Erotha, Marcel, and Flight Gamer. See you all tomorrow. For Jill. Oh, spoilers. Whoa.